All right, folks, today we are doing a San Francisco 49ers seven-round mock draft. This is based on my first-round mock from Monday. If you didn't see that video, please check right about over here somewhere. There will be a link to that. You can see how that all played out. This is an extension of that. We're going to go beyond the first round and look at what they did in the next seven rounds, six rounds after whatever. A um, couple things. First of all, make sure you leave some comments, give me some feedback on a couple things that I probably missed out on. Also, please check out the membership options. I've got... What I usually do is I'll, I'll, I'm recording this on Sunday and I'm scheduling it, I believe, for Wednesday. If you want to watch it early, you can do that if you join in on the memberships. So I've got some stuff. Just check it out. I'm not going to waste too much time talking about it here, but just go look at it. As far as my thought process here for the 49ers, um, the worst part about this is with every mock draft, you look at it and say, where are the weaknesses? How do we fix it and then become an elite team? The amount of free agents you guys have is unbelievable. I'm talking in 2021 and 2022. In other words, guys that are not signed through 2022. Taylor, White, Benjamin, Reed, uh, Dwelly, Bourne, James, Thompson. These are the receiving options. Obviously, those are tight ends as well. Mullins and Bethard at quarterback. McKinnon, Mostert, Wilson, Coleman at running back. Juszczyk at fullback. On the offensive line, Williams, Coleman, Tomlinson, Garland, Grassu, Bergstrom, Brendel, Compton, McGlinchey. And I know some of these guys are going to get re-signed, but that's going to weigh on your salary cap and, and mean that you're not going to be able to re-sign some of these other guys. I know you're going to re-sign McGlinchey, but still, you can't re-sign everybody. That's just the offense. Defensive line, Street, Blair, Jones, Ansa, Jordan, Hyder, Willis, Thomas. Almost all of them except Street are free agents after 2020. Linebacker, Warner, Walker, Najishushush, and Al Shair. Sure, I messed up the last two guys' names. The other guy, I didn't even try. But that's that's most of your linebackers, with the exception of Greenlaw. The defensive backs, horrific. Your corners, basically all of them. Verrett, Johnson, Taylor, Williams, Witherspoon, Sherman, Mosley. Safeties, Moore, Tart, Harris, and Nakua. Uh, yeah, Nakua. Seems about right. Also, your long snapper, Tabor, Pepper. So, your whole team needs to be re-signed. And they're not going to get re-signed. So, unfortunately, my biggest thing here is... I got to try to replenish a lot of these guys that are leaving. It's not even about getting better. It's about trying to stop the bleeding. We're going to get worse, and I'm trying to stop that as much as is humanly possible. I hate that that's the situation, but it just is the situation. Again, I know we're going to re-sign some of these guys. We can't re-sign all of them. It is what it is. Here we go. With the 12th pick in the uh, first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select... Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. Now, this one is this is awesome, right? 49ers fans know they need corners. They want corners. This is one of the better corners. We're getting him outside of the top 10, which a lot of people think he is a top 10 prospect. This is a, a great pickup. Now, again, it's, it, it, everything comes with a, a hint of sadness because it's about replacing guys that are, that are leaving. So you're hoping that you can get better at corner and that he's a lockdown corner and that even though we're losing guys, we're still going to get better. But... Um, Either way, trying to set that out of our minds for now, we are getting one of the top corners in the draft. It is a big need, and it's awesome that he fell to us here. And so we're going to take Caleb Farley with the 12th overall pick. With the 43rd pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive guard, USC. Again, same exact situation. We've got four interior offensive linemen that are free agents after 2020. All of them are going to be in their 30s in 2021. That's not great. You've also got two that are in the final years of their contract in 2021. And in 2021, they will be 29 years old, meaning in 2022 when they're free agents, they're both 30. The odds that any of these guys make it to another contract individually is very low. Maybe one or two just out of necessity we're going to have to resign, but it's just a really bad situation. We need guys, and we're going to start with Elijah Vera Tucker. With the 109th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Ambry Thomas, cornerback, 
Michigan. So again, you don't like that you're spending so many things, but now we can start to get excited because now we've got two young guys that are coming in that are going to be the future at cornerback for the 49ers. It doesn't feel like a dire situation. We're going to re-sign some guys. you got free agency. We can work out some stuff. Now that we have two guys, you start to feel better. Six foot, 183 out of Michigan. He did not play in 2020, but this is a guy who played for a pretty big program. He got better every single year. Real solid tackler great cover guy. Uh, 2017, he struggled a little bit. 2018, he started to play a little more and got a lot better. 2019, he played as a full-time starter, 82 overall coverage grade, 74 overall tackling grade, real solid player. He allowed one touchdown in three years, but had four interceptions, four pass breakups, and a, if I can look behind my phone, 46.4 passer rate, career passer rating at Michigan when targeted. So he's a stud, man. He, he really is. Um, I think he's going to be a good player. And again, we've got two young, uh, young studs coming in. And um, I think what was a disaster is now rectified. We got some other issues, but I'm actually feeling good about corner at this point. With the 140th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Richie Grant, safety, UCF. Um, I, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of it's not as dire in terms of people leaving. Obviously, it is to some degree. I just don't know that we have that top-end safety that is that is young, right? Who's the young stud that we're really excited about? There's nobody. We got guys that can do their job. They're getting older. They're just kind of there. Um, I know it's getting late in, in the rounds, and Richie Grant has not always graded out super well. He's kind of up and down, but um, always been an incredible strong safety is in terms of his ability to to play the run but it's not just that his ability to get to the ball is awesome he's never had less than four pass breakups in a season including 2017 when he only played 193 snaps he had four pass breakups the next year he had four pass breakups and six interceptions in 2019 he had six pass breakups and a pick in 2020 five pass breakups three interceptions despite only playing what uh, nine games this season so i mean it, it's it's not even like the NFL where you're playing a ton of games. It's we're talking five pass breakups and three picks. That's that's like that's one a game. So for whatever his flaws, he's going to be a real solid, strong safety to come up in the box and, and, and lay the wood on some people. But again, he's also kind of a ball hawk. So you'll probably get a little bit of inconsistency. But hey, that's what you get when we're talking, what are we, in the fifth round? You're going to get a little bit of that. But he's just got some natural instincts, and he's just a solid football player that, um, you know, if you get some good coaching, which we do have, I think you can make something special out of Richie Grant. With the 159th pick in the 2000, in the fifth round, 2021 draft, you know what draft it is. The 49ers select Jarrett Patterson, offensive center, Notre Dame. Again, we need guys on the interior. A lot of guys are getting old. They're going to be leaving pretty soon. I think the exciting thing about him is that he, I think he's just a good fit. First of all, Notre Dame's offensive line is real solid. It's a great program for that. The other thing that, that I like about him, which most teams probably don't care about, they get guys that can pass block, and who cares if, if they ever can run block in their lives. But um, he's actually a dominant run blocker. I, I, as much as he's a good pass blocker, he's going to do his job. You have to have that in the NFL or you don't play. He can do that. He's also a dominant run blocker, which when you're the San Francisco 49ers, and that is a key part of what you do, you run the ball well, you control the, the clock and all that, he's just going to slide. I think he starts. And again, when you get into these later rounds, if you got guys that you look at and say, you know what, I think he's going to be a starter, if not 2021, 2022, and he's going to play for a long time and be a good player, you get excited about those kinds of picks. And I, I really think he slides in and plays very soon. With the 171st pick in the sixth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Kellen Mond, quarterback, Texas A&M. Kind of iffy what we're doing here, right? I mean, it's it's probably not going to be your starting quarterback going forward, although we're going to give him every opportunity. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have – what I've learned doing the seven-round mocks is after the first-ish first, first -ish round, it's pretty dire at quarterback. Um, not a lot of options, just not a lot of human beings, right? There's just not a lot of – there are entire rounds where it's like there's just nobody. But uh, Kellen Mond is not a terrible quarterback. He's actually come on pretty strong in the second half of the year. If you want to see peak Kellen Mond, go check him out week nine against Arkansas. If you want to see some bad Kellen Mond, maybe Vanderbilt or LSU are pretty bad games. 
but I think he's got some tools. Six foot three, 217 pounds. He's not terrible under pressure. Uh, if we look at his stats under pressure, um, he's got, what, 425 yards, seven touchdowns, two interceptions. At the very least, that's decent. 88 overall passer rating, um, 286-ish yards, I think, rushing. So um, if nothing else, we're looking at the fact that we've got Bethard and Mullins are gone, so he'll be able to play behind Garoppolo, and we can reassess what we do going forward. Do we find a, a newer, better quarterback? Um, in 2022, do we give Kellen Mond an opportunity? Does Garoppolo kind of step it up? I don't know. We, we can call it a backup slash shot across the bow at uh, Garoppolo that he needs to wake up. That's about the best we can do right now. But I do want to do something at the position because, again, the play of our starter is not good enough and we're losing two backups. So I, I feel like we got to do something. With the 193rd pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select my Jay Sanders edge rusher Cincinnati again this is really just a depth thing um, it's not that we're lacking talent we've got one of the best pass rushers in football but Hyder Willis Thomas and Blair are all free agents we got to have more bodies and again we're in the seventh round I'm not looking for a for a Bosa but we still need human beings at the position so we're going to take a swing at my Jay Sanders edge rusher out of Cincinnati Finally, with the 202nd pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Trey Sermon, running back, Ohio State. Now, everybody's going to freak out because he had a huge game on Saturday. Um, clearly, this is a guy that's gotten better and better over time. He was not... He was clearly overlooked for a long time, and, and how far up the boards he's going to jump after this week, which I'm sure he's going to move up quite a bit, just based on hype, right? It, when, when that much blows up on Twitter, guys are going to move him up just for clout, just so that they can say they moved him up, so they can be the first, you know, the, the earliest to, to get on the Trey Sermon hype train. They're going to say it all over their podcast, blah, 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 blah. But I do think it's warranted. I don't think he's going to stay in the seventh round very long. Um, started off at Oklahoma for three years, comes over to Ohio State, and he really was – doing basically nothing i mean he's getting around 10 carries a game week 8 9 and 10 he got 48 56 and 68 yards didn't have a single touchdown week 12 was a little bit of a breakout he only had nine carries for 60 yards but that's 6.7 yards per attempt so it's kind of a you know you kind of do a little bit of a double take um then finally indiana or excuse me michigan state week 14 10 carries 112 yards and a touchdown that's 11.2 yards per attempt um two carries of 10 or more yards he had 3.7 yards after contact on average 64 yards was his longest scamper um had three avoided tackles and then the ultimate breakout game and the reason why he's just all over the place pff gave him an elite grade in this game against northwestern um they gave him 29 carries. Again, his highest this this year was 13, so they leaned into him. They, they said, listen, this guy's doing something special the last two weeks. He's really doing a great thing. Let's really lean into this and give him the ball a lot. 29 carries. He maintained the 11.2 yard. When you, when you get 11.2 yards on 10 carries, it's a little fluky. He maintained that, actually improved on it, 11.4 yards on 29 carries for 331 yards. He had two touchdowns, 15 first. He had more first downs in this game than he had carries in any other game this year. Nine carries of 10 or more yards, which again, that's basically about how many carries he had in these previous games. 196 yards after contact, 6.76 yards after contact on average per attempt. Another 65-yard long carry, 16 avoided tackles. About as good of a game as a running back can have, period. So again, I don't know if he stays in the seventh round for very, very long. He might be working his way up to third-ish round or higher after, after what he just did. But again... We're buying low because this mock draft was done a week ago, uh, back when nobody cared about Trey Sermon and was basically a seventh-round prospect. So congratulations on getting Trey Sermon. That's going to do it, guys. Again, I would love as many comments as you could possibly get. It's going to help me with the next time we do a 49ers mock as well as uh, first-round mocks going forward. I'm going to start mine basically tomorrow we're doing the next first round mock so i want as many 49ers comments as i can possibly get i'm sure i missed some stuff let me know what you think about the prospects individually 
Um, otherwise, again, please uh, check out the subscriptions if you're at all interested. You can get uh, early access to the videos. You get some custom emojis and badges and whatnot. And if you get into the highest tier, the MVP tier, I'm actually going to let you make a pick for your team, whether that be a video or just you know through text or however you want to do it. We'll figure that whole thing out. But um, I hope that you'll at least check that out. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Have a great day.